today. Lord, we desire you. We desire your presence, Lord. We're not here just for a service or just to sing songs, God. We're here to seek your face, the living God, the one true living God. Come on, you're the desire of our hearts, oh Lord. Let's sing it together. All my days on earth I will.
the champion of the host above the captain of our destiny great god in you alone we make our boast this afternoon because you are the captain of our lives you are the captain of our lives the one that will never allow the ship of our lives the boat of our lives to capsize we give you glory jesus in you alone we make our boast Thank you, Father, for being our ever-present help in the hour that we needed you the most. We glorify your name this day. Be thou exalted, Abba, Father. Be thou the exalted King of kings, and I am that I am. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' precious name, we have worshipped him. I want us once again to lift up our voice. He is the captain of our destiny the captain of our destiny that will never allow the boat that is you are sailing to capsize that will never allow the boat that we are sailing to suffer any boisterous wind shall we lift up our voice and give thanks to god for calming every storm for calming every every wind on this journey father this far we appreciate you 
you have been the captain of our destiny, the captain of the boat. You have been the one leading, oh God. We give you glory because you have not allowed the wind of life to cause any damage on this journey. We glorify you. You haven't allowed the storms of life to cause any mayhem. To you alone be all the praise. In Jesus' precious name, we have given him thanks. Eternal rock of ages, I thank you this hour. I glorify your name because you are already in this place. Father, you are not here to make things worse. You are here to make things better. You are not here to leave us with any weight. You are here to lift every weight and make our lives lighter. Spirit of the living God, you that quicken Jesus from the grave, I pray that you quicken every aspect of this midday prayer today and let God's intention for each and every one of us be realized today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Very good afternoon to every one of you that is right now online for today's midday prayer. I'm grateful to God for this opportunity that he has given me again to come your way with a short exaltation and then a prayer session. You are most welcome to today's midday prayer in Jesus' precious name. I can see many of us already online and I know there are still more that would wish to be part of today's midday prayer. Like I said last week, there are some of your friends that are already used that anytime you share this broadcast, they are able to come and be part of the prayer session. I kindly request you to share the broadcast so that we can get other friends online as I also prepare our worship background. Then we can all flow together in the same spirit hallelujah you are highly welcome i'm so excited seeing you online tanya enani you're welcome in jesus name mommy labi you're welcome all the way from abuja you're welcome it is nice seeing you online today princess namai you've been on break welcome back sue meli you're welcome sweet sue you're welcome in jesus name Masi Abida, you're welcome. Uh, Beryl, you're welcome. Aseyo, you're welcome. Josephine, Josie, you're welcome. Joy Moende, you're welcome. Eve Enyola Ogutu, all the way from Kisumu City, welcome to today's midday prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm glad, Joanna Diambo, you're, Diambo, you're welcome. Feel Isemi, you're welcome from Malindi. You're welcome in Jesus' name. Uh, Pen the favor. You're welcome all the way from Germany. It is nice having you online today. Joy Mutheu, you're welcome in Jesus' name. Pastor Lea Gikaria, you're welcome to today's midday prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Marianne Gatoni, welcome and welcome. Mama Jennifer Timba, you're welcome. You're all welcome to today's midday prayer in Jesus name hallelujah I believe that we're gonna have the best of time today in the presence of God because that is what we are here for none of us will leave today's session disappointed you will not leave today's session disappointed you'll be glad that you came online and you were able to hear the word of God and you were also able to have a time of personal intercession with God. Like I promised us last week, uh, Wednesday, that I was going to introduce a new topic. This is a topic that has been burning in my heart since late uh, March thereabout. And I remember early April in one of our women meetings in the church, I introduced it partially, but I wasn't able to talk much on it. And this topic have not left me. It has been burning in my heart. And I'm sure the reason why it is burning in my heart is because God wants to speak to us. Praise the Lord. So the topic we'll be looking at in this season is living a balanced Christian life. Living a balanced Christian life. Our text will be from the book of 1 Corinthians 
chapter 6 and verse 12. First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 12. Now, when we talk about the word balance, the word balance means uh, equal distribution of weight, an equal distribution of weight. Balance also means stability. So today will be basically the introductory part. If I'm able to go far, praise God. If I'm not, wherever we are able to reach, we will stop and then we will now continue on Wednesday. Balance means equal distribution of weight. Balance means stability. Now, if you look at this definition, you will discover here that it entails a process equal distribution of weight. By this definition, it entails a process and it also calls for diligence. You know, for you to be able to equally distribute weight, it calls for diligence. You have to be very keen. You have to be very careful to be able to know the weight to move from one point to the other so that it will be just, so that it will be balanced for the purpose of stability. The Bible made us understand in the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 1. I want us to begin our journey from there. Proverbs 11 and verse 1. Praise the Lord. It says that uh, a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. It means a false balance is unacceptable before God. He said, therefore, it is an abomination. It is a taboo. It is shameful. It is a sin. He went further to say, but a just weight is his delight. I want us to understand that nothing suffers instability in life like a person or an object that has no stand or it has no balance. I want to repeat myself. Nothing suffers instability in life like an object, a person, or even a building that have no stand, that have no stability. The slightest wind of life can cheaply sweep it off, can cheaply blow it off. This is how it is in the life of a Christian, in the life of a Christian woman, in the life of a Christian man. The slightest wind of life, as for winds of life, I tell you the truth, winds will blow, storms will come. But one of the things that will keep you stable, that will give you stability in the midst of the winds that will blow, in the midst of the storms of life, is your balanced Christian life. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 7 from verse 24. It's talking about wisdom. It says, a man that builds his house upon a rock will be likened to a wise man. He said, when wind blow, when rain falls. So wind will blow. Wind connotes a time. Wind will blow. Marital wind will blow. Pandemic wind is already blowing. And permit me to say, the wind of this global pandemic have really swept many away. We are not rejoicing over the lives of those this wind have blown away. These are people that were once in faith. But the wind of the current global pandemic came and blew some away. It swept them off. And the reason why many have been swept away is because of lack of balance, lack of stability. Like I say, that the slightest wind can sweep away, can cheaply sweep away a man or a woman that have no stand, can easily sweep away a family 
that have no star can easily sweep away a relationship that have no stand or have no balance. I want to say this to someone hearing me, that the wind of displacement is real. The wind of displacement is real. We have seen the current uh, wind of the global pandemic. And you know, prophetically, more winds will blow. That is just the truth. There is nothing we can do about it. But your stability and my stability will be determined by our stand, by how balanced we are spiritually. Praise the Lord. Somebody may be asking, what does it mean to live a balanced Christian life? Living a balanced Christian life simply means following the laid down Christian precepts. It is following the laid down Christian rules. That is it, as simple as it is. Following the laid down Christian precept, it means following the laid down Christian rules. I want us to read from our text, which is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 12. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 12. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 6, 12, if you are there, I read. He said, everything, I want you to take note of this, everything, including unforgiveness, including malice. He said, everything is permissible. Everything is permissible, means allowable and lawful for me. That was Paul speaking, or that is Paul speaking. He said, but not all things are helpful. In as much as everything is permissible, everything is allowable, Paul quickly said something here. He said, but not all things are helpful for me. Not all things are good for me. Not all things are expedient for me. Not all things are profitable to me. There are things I wrote in my note. There are things that are not sinful. They are not sinful. But when they, we indulge into them, they don't allow us to live a balanced Christian life, which thereby exposes the life of a Christian woman, exposes the life of a Christian man to be swept away by the slightest wind of life that blows. Paul, they are supposed to speak in here. He said, everything is permissible. Hmm. Everything is allowable for me. He said, but not all things are helpful. All things are allowable, but not all things are helpful. It takes a foolish man or a foolish woman to walk around with things that he or she knows that are not helpful for her. God will be using this series of teaching to guide us and to help us to identify these things that are not helpful for us so that we can diligently and keenly do away with them do away with them so that they don't interfere with our life so that they don't you know expose our life to 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 winds of displacement that will surely blow praise the lord so to live a balanced christian life will demand that you diligently sort out the things that are good for you from the things that are not good for you he said everything is permissible Everything is allowable for me, but these things allowable, these things permissible, not all of them are good for me. Not all of them are helpful for me. So if I will live a balanced life, I have to be diligent to be able to sort out the things that are helpful for me from the things that are not helpful for me. The things that are useful for me from the things that are not useful for me. I have to be diligent to be able to know 
what to allow into my life and what not to allow into my life. Praise the Lord. Like I said, that there are things that are not sinful as it were. But if we allow those, these things into our life, they are going to interfere. They will not help us to be able to live a balanced Christian life. In this series, we'll be, we'll be looking at how to be able to live a balanced social life. Praise the Lord. That in living your social life, you'll be able to know what to allow, what to be able to wear and not to wear. What to be able to put in your mouth and what not to put in your mouth. What to be able to drink and what not to drink. How to live a balanced Christian life in our homes. How to live a balanced Christian life in our relationships. What to allow and what not to allow. What is helpful and what is not helpful. So you will be diligent to be able to identify what is helpful for you. And faithfully do away with them so that they don't do away with you. Listen to me, the truth is the danger of not living a balanced Christian life is that it will make you to just be a shallow Christian, which is unscriptural. The Bible expects us to be believers that dig deep, that dig deep. He said deep, call it unto deep. You can't go deep until you are able to allow yourself or you are able to embrace this lifestyle that I'm talking about. And if you live a balanced Christian life, there are things to, 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 to identify and lay aside. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrew, he said, running the rest that is set before us with patience, laying aside every weight and every sin that do so easily beset us. Being grounded to live a balanced Christian life is to be grounded in faith, is to refuse to be tossed here and there, is to be stable, is to stand and be firm in your walk of faith. Is to know what to allow and what to disallow. The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 4, from verse uh, 11. It is living a balanced Christian life is refusing to be a nursery plant. Praise the Lord. Refusing to be a nursery plant is only a nursery plant that is carried from one point to another. There is a nursery here not far away from my house where nursery plants are, are, are sold. Every now and then you see the attendants in those, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the attendants carrying one nursery plant from one shed to another. It is either you see them carrying palm uh, seed, palm uh, the, 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 what do you call it? There is this palm flower carrying it from one shed to another. Now I repeat, living a balanced Christian life is refusing to be a nursery plant that is tossed here and there, that is carried here and there. Listen to me, a nursery plant never experienced drought. It is forever being watered. It is watered in the morning. It is watered in the evening. It is carried in the morning and it is carried in the evening. Living a balanced Christian life is refusing to be a nursery plant. A nursery plant can never bear fruit. Therefore, nobody eats fruit from a nursery plant. I want us to read the book of Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11. The reason why a nursery plant doesn't bear fruit because it doesn't live a balanced life. Praise the Lord. It relies on the water that is poured by the nursery attendant in the morning. The water that is poured by the nursery attendant in the evening. Even the root of that plant, it remains in that polythene, the black polythene. It is not in the earth. It remains in the soil that is in that black polythene. So there is a lot of limitation that a nursery plant suffers. That is how it is with a Christian, with a Christian woman, with a Christian man that refuses to live a balanced Christian life. Praise the Lord. In Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11, I read, 
He said, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Verse 12 says, for the perfecting. So the purpose of the gift, he said, it is for the perfecting of the saints and for the work of ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ. If you read verse 12, it is basically saying it is for creating impact. The purpose of the gift is to make you and I a solution to our generation. The purpose of the gift is to create impact while you are still alive. But the truth remains, you can't be a man or a woman of impact without a balanced Christian life. Verse 13 says, he said, till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. My emphasis is verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. If you have no stand as a Christian, you can't be excused from being tossed to and fro. Until you are balanced in your Christian life, you can't be excused from being tossed. Remember I said there is a wind of displacement. What excuses you from being displaced from this wind I'm talking about is how balanced you are. Is your stand in your Christian adventure. He said that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. Being tossed in your relationship to and fro, no more. Being tossed to and fro in your Christian life, no more. He said, and carried about. Remember the, exa the example I gave us of the, of the, of the, uh, of the, nursery plant being carried about i have seen uh, some people relocating their nursery from uh, i mean mombasa from uh, from bombolulu to nyali they relocate such nursery plants from bombolulu to nyali that is why a nursery plant can never be a fruit nobody i've never seen people gather around a nursery and you ask them what are they doing and they tell you by the way we are here to plug from the fruits that this nursery plants have bore it is impossible you know why because nursery plants don't live a balanced life they are tossed to and fro our lives are to bear fruits that others will eat and benefit from when will this happen? How quick will this happen? It will happen when we are able to embrace, when we are able to have a stand in our journey of faith. He said we shouldn't allow ourselves to be tossed to and fro and to be carried about with every wind of doctrine. To be carried about with every wind of doctrine. Listen to me, there is nothing wrong to connect there is nothing wrong to receive from other vessels of God as I speak right now there are some of you that are online that don't belong to the denomination where I fellowship but somehow you keep coming online because the midday prayer session is being a blessing to you or you love just to be part of this session so that you can also use that time to pray there is nothing wrong with that but listen to me, everything is wrong if what you are receiving, you are not creating time to implement it in your life. Today you pick from here, today you pick from there, next tomorrow you pick all around. But you are not able to use what you are collating to make a decisive decision that will build your life up spiritually. Everything becomes wrong with that. Praise the Lord. But if you are keen in picking every instruction, picking every word and applying it to where it is necessary, you will agree with me. You will enjoy stability in your journey of faith. And that is part of the ingredient that you'll be using to build yourself and also to be able to live a balanced Christian life. 
But if you are just collecting, collecting, collecting without implementation, then it is of no use. Remember, all things are allowable. All things are permissible. But Paul said, not all are helpful. Not all are useful for me. That's why we'll be praying today that, Father, open my eyes to identify what is useful for me. We are of age. We all know what is useful for us. We know what is not useful for us. As long as you keep what is not useful for you, you will not grow. As long as we keep what is not useful for us in our relationship. The reason why many relationships are not stable is because the people, the parties in this relationship are keeping what is not useful for them. Father, open my eyes to identify what is useful for me and help me to keep that which is useful for me. I want us to pray this prayer. What is useful for you? The Lord open my eyes. He said, all things are permissible. All things are allowable. But not all are lawful. Not all are useful. So you cannot completely bend your life to what is not useful. All in the name that is allowable. As long as it is not useful for you, even though it is allowable, please don't allow it. As long as it is not useful for you, it is not helpful for you. Don't allow it. Many Christian women, many Christian men have exposed their lives to what is permissible, but it is not useful. That's why I want us to pray this prayer sincerely from our heart. The Lord open my eyes to see that which is not useful. Let's begin with that. That which is not useful for me. Open my eyes to see it. And let me be sincere to let go what is not useful. To part ways with what is not useful. That which is not useful that I've allowed into my life. Father, I let it go today in the name of Jesus. Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I ask, O oh God, in our quest to live a balanced Christian life, open my eyes to see what is permissible but is not useful that I've allowed into my life. That which is permissible, but is not useful, that you have allowed into your relationship. Ask the Lord to open your eyes to see. Lord, in my quest to live a balanced Christian life, I pray this prayer honestly from my heart. What is it that is permissible, but it is not useful, that I've allowed into my life? Open my eyes to see it. Open my eyes to see it. That which is permissible, but isn't useful, that I've allowed into my life. Open my eyes to see it, O God. Kalibrodo sandelikaya. Zeke tibra dushi itayan delito ziba. Malika etiko zibra yan delikaya. Zeba ya latu sheya kata. Bradiko ye kete kadia. The permissible but not useful that I've allowed into my life. That I've allowed into my relationships. Father, open my eyes this day that I'll be able to part ways with whatever I've allowed into my life and it's not helpful for me. What allowed into my relationship that is not useful, that is not helpful for me. In the name of Jesus, I take courage and boldness to let go that which I've allowed into my life that isn't useful for me, that which I've allowed into my relationships that isn't useful for me. I want to live a balanced Christian life. I don't want to live my life like a nursery plant that does not bear fruit. I want to live a balanced Christian life. It takes a balanced Christian life to bear fruit. It takes a balanced Christian life to bear fruit. I want to live a balanced Christian life so that I will not be tossed to and fro. So that I will not be tossed to and fro. Lord, I want to live a balanced Christian life that I will begin. It is a time of sorting out. Listen to me. If you will live a balanced Christian life, you have to be willing to sort out. If you will live a balanced Christian life, if I will live a balanced Christian life, I have to be willing to sort out. Praise the Lord. 
the same way sometimes you 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 decide to sort some things out in your life sort some things in your wardrobe sort some things in your drawers in your cabinet in the office in your drawers at home so it is in our christian adventure if i will live a balanced christian life i have to be willing to sort out it is a time of sorting out it is a time to sort out what you need from what you don't need the association you need from the association you don't need praise the lord it is a time of sorting out what to keep from what not to keep it is a time of sorting out what to embrace from what not to embrace there are things to embrace but there are things to turn your back away from it is a time of sorting out in our quest to live a balanced christian life we have to be willing to sort out sort the things you need from the things you do not require it is a time of sorting out it is a time of sorting out so that you cannot be tossed to and fro it is a time of sorting out so that you cannot be a victim of the wind of displacement it is a time of sorting out so that you will have a stand listen to me without a sorting out you cannot have a stand and without a stand you cannot have a say i repeat without a sorting out you cannot have a stand and without a stand you cannot have a stay and like i said at the beginning that the greatest uh, 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 that, 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 that the greatest challenge a man or a woman or an object will have is not to have a stand because the slightest wind of life will blow them the slightest wind of life will displace them. I pray for each and every one of us that is online right now that will embrace this season of sorting out, that we will be sincere to ourselves, we will be sincere to our lives to be able to know what to do away with, to be able to know what to turn our backs away from, to be able to know what to embrace, what to accept. He said all things are permissible. All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. Oh God, I pray, open my eyes to identify things that are helpful for me so that I'll, I will allow it into my life, to allow things that are helpful into my life, to allow thoughts that are helpful. This goes up to our thoughts, thoughts that are helpful for you. Praise the Lord. Thoughts that are helpful for your life, thoughts that are helpful for your health. Thoughts that are helpful for your relationship, oh God. That I will only allow the thoughts that are helpful for me. Thoughts that are helpful for that marriage. So marriage are suffering because the thoughts that the wife have allowed into that marriage are thoughts that are not helpful. Some businesses are suffering because the thoughts the business owners have allowed into those businesses are not thoughts that are helpful for the business. Lord, that I will only allow the thoughts that are helpful for me, thoughts that are helpful for my relationship, thoughts that are helpful for my business, thoughts that are helpful for my life in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask of you, oh God, whatever is not profitable for me will not be a part of me on this journey. In my quest to live a balanced life, I ask, oh God, that I open the door of my heart to thoughts that are only helpful for me. In my quest to live a balanced Christian life, in my relationship, I open the door of my heart to thoughts that are only helpful in my relationship. Thoughts that are only helpful in my Christian adventure. Thank you, Father. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. The Bible tells us that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. In our quest to live a balanced Christian life means that only thoughts that are helpful, only thoughts that build, only thoughts that exalt should be able to access our lives. Only thoughts that give stability on this journey should be able to access our heart. Thoughts that are not useful for you, shut them out. Thoughts that are not helpful for you, shut them out. I don't want to be a nursery plant. There are lives waiting to eat from the fruit of your life. 
there are lives waiting to eat from the fruit of my life. So if I will allow myself to bear fruit, then I must be willing to embrace what is useful for me from what is not useful for me. Shut the door from what is helpful for me from what is not helpful for me. I believe I've been able to lay this foundation today and we've been able to understand the importance why we need to live a balanced Christian life. By the help of God, on Wednesday, I'll be building more blocks on this topic so that we can go deeper. This is a timely topic for each and every one of us. Like I told you, it is a topic that has been burning in my heart so that we'll be able to know how to balance our profession and also our work with God, how to balance our relationship, how to balance many things so that one side is not left unattended to. Praise the Lord. I look forward to seeing each and every one of us come Wednesday so that we can continue from where we are stopping today. Praise the Lord. Living a balanced Christian life is a must. If your life and my own will bear fruit, living a balanced Christian life is a must. Praise the Lord. In case you've been listening to me and you are not born again, the journey to living a balanced Christian life begins with salvation. Begins with salvation. I would like you to pray this prayer with me. Repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, I recognize today that I am a sinner. I admit that I'm not yet born again. And I open my mouth to make this confession. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my personal Savior. Satan, I renounce your ways. I renounce your deeds. By this confession, I am now a child of God and I'm born again. Thank you, Lord, for accepting me. For it is in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Congratulations in case you pray this prayer. You are now a child of God. You are born again. The journey to living a balanced Christian life have just begun for you. So what do you need to do, you might ask? Locate a Bible-believing church. Share with the pastor your experience. And he'll be able to show you step by step what you need to do to give you stability, to give you a stand on this journey so that you will not be a victim of the wind of displacement. And in case you are in Mombasa, why not reach out to me on the details being displayed? It will also be my joy to be able to guide you and show you what you need to do so that when the wind of life blows, you'll be able to have a stand in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And for each and every one of us that is online, when the wind of life blows, we will not be victims. We'll be able to have a stand in the precious name of Jesus. When the wind of displacement blows, we will not be a victim. You and I will not be victims. We'll be able to help. We will be able to help to withstand the wind of displacement in the precious name of Jesus Christ. It is time to give our offerings. One of the ways to withstand the wind of financial displacement is to make sure you have a stand in the kingdom. Your resources have a stand in the kingdom. Praise the Lord. One of the ways to withstand the wind of financial displacement is to make sure your seed have a stand in the kingdom. Listen to me. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalms chapter 20 from verse 1 downwards there. He said, the Lord will remember your offering and he will send you help out of the sanctuary, out of Zion. When will God remember our offering? When the wind of financial displacement begins to blow. When the wind of financial displacement begins to blow, what brings your remembrance and my remembrance before God is our seed in the kingdom. If you don't have a seed in the kingdom, you expose your life or rather you become a victim to the wind of financial displacement. And the truth is, like I say, that wind is already blowing. And it is my prayer that none of us will be victim of this wind. The details already have been displayed, just like you are giving your offering at this hour. I am also giving my own. 
because I don't want to suffer the wind of financial displacement. I don't want my business to suffer the wind of financial displacement. Father, in the name of Jesus, we appreciate you for this opportunity that you have granted us, O oh God, to worship you with our offering. Lord, we want to live a balanced life even in our finances. Therefore, we are sowing our seed in the kingdom that in the day of the wind of displacement, you will remember that we have a seed in the kingdom. Our seed in the kingdom will act as our shield, will act our as our defense against every boisterous wind of financial displacement, every wind of drought. Our seed in the kingdom will act as a shield against the drought, against the wind of drought over our businesses and the work of our hands. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Once again, I must appreciate each and every one of you that connected to today's midday prayer. I believe God has ministered to each and every one of us. Hallelujah. Living a balanced Christian life. I look forward to seeing you again on Wednesday, the same time, the same platform, so that we can continue from where we stop. Like I said, it is a very broad topic that affects virtually every aspect of our lives. But God will help us to be able to see the areas we will be looking at. And I believe as we do so, stability shall be the order of the day for us in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Remember, refuse to be a nursery plant. A nursery plant will never bear fruit because a nursery plant does not live a balanced life. See you on Wednesday and remain blessed. Amen. Father, we thank you, Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. We glorify and honor you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Lord Jesus.